What's up guys, so let's talk about a TX valve for a minute. This is the body of one that came out of a machine that my coworker was working on. And here is the power head right here. So on the body, we have some things to look at. We have the inlet, we have the outlet, we have the equalization line right here. And then at the bottom, we have our stem there where we adjust our spring for our superheat. So let's talk about this real quick. So the TX valve has three forces. There's two closing forces and one opening force. And to show you the first closing force, I have to take this piece off with the stem because there is a spring in here. All right. And then there's a, a seat here and then there's an opening inside that that sits in. So that spring is a closing force on that valve. Okay. Now when this piece is in, that stem basically allows you to increase or decrease the closing force on this valve. Now the other closing force is the equalization line. This is basically evaporator pressure. Um, when you look at a system, you'll see this sort of piped over to the suction line on the outlet of the evaporator. Okay, so we have two closing forces. We got the spring that's inside the body and we have the pressure on the equalization line right there. Okay, so now here is our opening force. We have a bulb. Okay, this is the power head that screws on to the top of the valve. Okay, this power head has this cap line, the bulb, this bulb is mounted to the suction line, and then for bulb positioning, um, there's different ways. We, we can talk about that in a, in a different video or, or a different time. But basically, this bulb has a refrigerant charge in it. And when that bulb heats up, that refrigerant expands, the pressure moves down the cap line, all right, and moves this little piece in here, up and down. Basically, when it's pressurized, it's going to move this piece down. So it's going to move it downwards like that. So what happens at that point is that these two pins, you can see them, there's two pins right there. What that does is it pushes down against the spring pressure, right? And opens up that little piece. I'll show you again. Take the spring out. Okay. That little piece there sits inside that little orifice. So when these pins get pushed down, it pushes this whole piece down, right? And that opens up flow from inlet to outlet. All right, so when it does that, the bulb sees the, the refrigerant flow moving into the evaporator. Um, obviously, it's gonna get a little bit colder because we're adding more refrigerant. This bulb will then get colder, okay? The gas will then contract. This will go up. This is hard to do with all the stuff in my hand, but this little diaphragm in here will move up okay the pins will move up and the spring will go back to its original position and it keeps moving up and down during operation so that's basically how a tx valve works it's a very very simple explanation just to get your your mind wrapped around it is that we have three forces we have a spring in here which is a closing force we have our equalization line which is a closing force and then we have our third which is an opening force which is our bulb pressurized with refrigerant that pressure needs somewhere to go, so it moves down the cap line, causes the power head to move inside, pushing down on the pins, pushing down on the spring, which causes flow to move through. And that's the most basic way I can describe a TX valve and how it works. And the adjustment right here, okay? Spring tension, increase spring tension, okay? by going clockwise, you will increase superheat, okay? Because you're allowing less flow through the valve. Decrease spring tension, you decrease superheat because you're allowing more flow through the valve. So that's it guys, happy HVACing.